Greetings, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is going to be part eight of And They Worshipped the Dragon. I'm hoping I'm at least halfway done with the series. I'm planning on moving soon. I'm working on it. Um, also, I plan on starting a channel on, I think it's real.video, uh, real video. You can find them on the website Natural News uh, with Mike Adams. He's not a believer, but he's tired of all the uh, censorship on YouTube, so he's going to create a business model for people that are being booted off of YouTube and uh, boy YouTube's been really blasting people off um, Brownells is a channel had a channel Brownells uh, is a company that sells gunsmithing tools I mean they're just getting rid of all the gun channels I mean just you know, oh, guns are bad, so we don't want them on YouTube. Of course not. Unless, of course, they're being sold to the Israelis to murder Palestinians. Then guns are good, but I digress. All right, so I'm on BitChute, B-I-T, one word, shoot, C-H-U-T-E, second word, dot com. I'm also on Minds.com, M-I-N-D-S.com, along with Colin Flaherty, who does the uh, black criminal stuff. And, uh, and then Mike Adams of Natural News. You can Google him. His channel was taken down from YouTube also, and Google delisted his uh, website so that's why he uh, decided to uh, start his own deal because he promotes natural health so there uh, he's gonna try to get rid of all uh, well combat the censorship so all right so this is part eight and they worshiped the dragon now one of Satan's big things is he wants us to sin. And what is sin? Well, let's go to the Bible for a definition. All right, in 1 John chapter 3, and verse 4, we read the following. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth, transgresseth also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. Well, guess what? What is transgression? You know, what is transgression? It's breaking the law. Uh, you're driving on the interstate, doing 90 miles an hour, speed limit 65, guess what? You're breaking the law. You're transgressing the law. You get a ticket. Some places you'd go to jail, but, you know, speed limit, that's the law and you broke the law but in the Bible we're talking about basically when you're talking about the law you're talking about the Ten Commandments you know thou shall not steal thou shall not covet um, thou shall not have any other gods before me you know you get the idea right now in verse, I'm sorry, yeah, same by book and chapter in verse, uh, but in verse 8. Matter of fact, let's read, let's take a look at that. Let's go to 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us. Yeah, think about that that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew not him. Uh, it knew him not. 
Beloved, now are we the sons of God. You see, in the Old Testament, Adam was called a son of God, and the angels were called sons of God. New, we're not called sons of God until we're born again of the Spirit in the New Testament. And Jesus is the only begotten Son of God. That's a very special place. So, verse 2, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. You know, think about it. When uh, Christ appears, we're going to be like him in some ways. You know? When he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath his hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. See, there's a verse in the Bible that says, um, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Well, guess what? That does not apply to Jesus. It applies to everybody else that's human, that lives on the earth. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But, and in him is no sin. See, Jesus didn't have any sin, but he took on our sins. Remember that. Sometimes all does not mean all. And we're going to cover more on that later. I actually did a an entire study on that. If you're interested, you can go to my homepage and do a search and write all, you know, A L L in the search thing, click and it'll come up. For as long as I'm on YouTube anyways. Uh I tell you what, when you got 900 um videos it's going to take me months, if I were to load all of them, to uh, a new channel. So, I'm going to spend a long time putting this YouTube channel together. I mean, I've been on YouTube for quite a while. Yeah, I've been on YouTube at least since 2012. And actually, I think longer than that, but I'm not sure, so... All right, uh, let's take a look. And in him is no sin. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither know him. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. Now, we did a previous study, I don't remember which one it was, for the, uh, in, in this series, about when did uh, Satan fall from heaven. And evidently, it was somewhere between the time that the earth was created and sometime before the serpent talked to Eve in the Garden of Eden and talked her into the, the um, well, before he told Eve, ye shall not surely die. So sometime between those, sometime between the creation of the earth and uh, Genesis chapter 3, some place in that period, there was a war in heaven. And that's, that's how I look at it. I don't remember what's, which Bible study it was, but it was sometime around there. For the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy 
the works of the devil. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. In this the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Did you know the devil has children? In this the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Whosoever doth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. For this is the message that ye have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another, not as Cain, who was of, of that wicked one, not as Cain, who was of that wicked one. Now, the word of is a very interesting word. It doesn't mean you're like something, you know. I mean, I might be, uh, I might think like a scientist, but I'm not a scientist. I might... You know, being like something is different than being of something. And what are cakes made of? Cakes are made of flour, sugar, oil, eggs, and then usually some kind of flavoring, you know, vanilla, chocolate, strawberry, whatever. But, you know, that's what they're made of. Cakes are not like flour. They don't follow flour. They are made of flour. Think about that. In verse 12, it says, Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one. Now, if Cain was fathered by Adam, not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, Adam. Adam would be the wicked one. Is Adam the wicked one? Or is somebody else the wicked one? Not as Cain who was of that wicked one. Or is the wicked one Satan? Think about that. Not as Cain who was of that wicked one and slew his brother. And wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil and his brothers righteous. Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hate you. We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. And ye know that no murderer, murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. Hereby perceive we the love of God, because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. Think about that. Now, why does uh, Satan try to get us to sin? Well, the answer to that is in Isaiah 59 and verse 2. But your iniquities, what's iniquity? That's sin. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your, si and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. You see, if Satan could get us to sin, God will hide his face from us. In 1 John 2.12, we read, I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. And my Greek, my Bible that was came from the Greek manuscripts say that name is Jesus. So think about that. In Hebrews 8 and verse 12, it says, For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness, 
and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. In Proverbs 10, 12, hatred stirreth up strifes. In other words, hatred stirs up uh, fighting. But love covereth all sins. You know, isn't that interesting? Hatred stirreth up strifes, but love covereth all sins. All right, in Matthew chapter 22, I know, those of you that listen to me for a while, babbling on, have heard this many, many times, but, you know, what can I tell you? Matthew 22, verse 36. Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Love. Right? Proverbs 10, 12. Hatred stirreth up strifes, but love covereth all sins. See, there's people um, that learn from those that call themselves Jews, and they'll say, uh, yeah, well, you know, that New Testament's so different from the Old Testament, uh, it, the New Testament can't possibly be real. Well, you know, what can I tell you? Proverbs, love, but love covereth all sins. If you love the Lord and love your neighbor, you're not going to murder him. You're not, you're, you know, you're not going to commit blasphemy against the Lord. You know, on these, on those, you know, love the Lord and love your neighbor. On those two things hang all the law and the prophets. And I believe Jesus. What can I tell you? In Ephesians 1 and verse 7, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. See, if you read the Old Testament, Satan and his children would get Israel to do things that were displeasing to the Lord, and he would, the Lord would, well, he wouldn't be, he would be, he wouldn't be happy, and then judgment would come. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you need to sit down at Genesis 1-1 Start reading and don't quit until you get to Revelation 22. And by that time, you'll know what I'm talking about. But, you know, it's a shame. People will spend hours and hours and hours watching television, but won't even bother to crack, crack open a Bible, you know, scraping the dust off the cover and actually reading what it says. You know, people died giving us this Bible. I mean, the Vatican had people burn translators at the stake to give us the Bible. William Tyndale. They actually took the paper leaves from his Bible and used it as kindling the light of sticks under his uh, on his under his body and they burned him alive with his own translation of the Bible and then they have the nerve to tell us that they were the ones that gave us the Bible they murdered people to keep us from having the Bible and you won't even bother to read it really oh and by the way the King James is banned according to Vatican dogma. It's on the book list of banned books. All your modern Bibles 
come from the Vatican manuscripts, which do not even have the book of Revelation in them. I mean, yes, I know the Catholic Bible has the book of Revelation in it, but they get it from the Greek manuscripts and not from their manuscripts. So, in Proverbs 28, 13, He that covereth his sins shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. See, God wants us to confess our sins, repent, and then forsake them. Turn away and don't do them anymore. I mean, there's actually famous Bible internet preachers on the internet that say all you got to do is believe on Jesus. You don't need to repent of your sins. That's a heresy. That's a work. But in Proverbs it says, But whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. Just because you go to a, a priest on and have a confession, Oh, gee, Father, forgive me, for I have sinned. I uh, had sex with my neighbor's wife three times last week, and, uh, and then I murdered her husband because I wanted to have her for my wife and uh, you know and then I did this and that and the other and I stole money from my employer the bank you know oh I forgive you son uh, say five Hail Marys and uh, you're forgiven no and then you go next week and do the same thing or worse and then you go to confession again really no says you've got to confess your sins and forsake them. Turn away. Repent. So, that's what that means. And I love Matthew chapter 1 and verse 21. It says, And she, speaking about Mary, And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Amen to that. You know, in Revelation 18 and verse 4, speaking about Mystery Babylon, And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. You see, God tells his people to be separate, segregated, separation. Don't be part of the system of this world. And if you are part of the world and you partake of their sins, you're going to receive of the same plagues. In Ezekiel chapter 18 and verse 21, But if the wicked, that was me, but if the wicked will turn from all his sins that he hath committed, and keep all my statutes, and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live, he shall not die. Isaiah 1 and verse 18. Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. And I don't think we're talking about the black sheep here, but what can I tell you? In Micah 17, I'm um, sorry, Micah, book of Micah, chapter 7, and verse 19. He will turn again. He will have compassion upon us. He will subdue our iniquities. And thou wilt cast all their sins into the depths of the sea.
In the book of James, chapter 5 and verse 15, And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up, and if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. James 5 and verse 20, Let him know that he that which converteth the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. See, people, that's why it's important, if you're an evangelist, uh, soul winning, very important. I'm not an evangelist. I'm a teacher. I take a newborn in Christ, and hopefully they listen, read the Bible, and become a soldier. We need soldiers. Soldiers for Christ is very important, especially in this time of history. All right. Deuteronomy chapter 9, starting in verse 16. This is Moses. Uh, Israel had made the golden calf, you know, breaking the commandment of, you know, not having idols and other gods. And I looked to behold... Ye had sinned against the Lord your God, and had made you a molten calf. Ye had turned aside quickly out of the way which the Lord had commanded you. And I took the two tab tables, and cast them out of my two hands, and brake them before your eyes. Just think, nobody broke the Ten Commandments like uh, Moses did, right? And I fell down before the Lord, as at the first Forty days and forty nights I did neither eat bread nor drink water because of all your sins which ye sinned in doing wickedly in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. For I was afraid of the anger and hot displeasure wherewith the Lord was wroth against you to destroy you. But the Lord hearkened unto me at that time also. See, this is why God, uh, Satan wants us to sin. It'll separate us from God. It'll cause God's anger. And you know, that's the thing. You get a kid, those of you that are parents, you get this. You know, when you were little, your parents said, you know, look both ways before you cross the street because, hey, guess what? Uh, people don't pay attention when they're driving. Now they're on their cell phones. You know, is it, are they trying to hold you back? No, they're trying to protect you. Well, that's what God tries to do. He tries to protect his children. But we don't listen. So that's why, you know, Satan tries to get us to sin. So God will get angry and destroy us. You know, in Jeremiah chapter 50 and verse, uh, uh, verse 20, in those days and in that time, saith the Lord, the iniquity of Israel shall be sought for, and there shall be none. And the sins of Judah, and they shall not be found, for I will pardon them whom I reserve. And one more to uh, Revelation chapter 1 and verse 5. And from Jesus Christ who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth unto him unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood all right people i got to keep this under 30 minutes all blessings praise glory and honor to the lamb of god slain from the foundation of the world all blessings praise glory and honor to him and that's Jesus, who is the Christ. In his precious name, amen.